First of all, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the information se um, session for pro our professional brewing programs at UC Davis. Um, there is a chat function that you can put in your comments um, to be able to have this a little bit more um, informative for those that are with us. Um, I'm Jim Brown. I'm the Director of Fermentation Science at Continuing Professional Education at UC Davis. Um, I do both sides, the wine and the brewing, so uh, don't hate me for that. Uh, but I have been working here for the last 18 years um, on the program, on the brewing, and I teach microbiology. Um, let's get started with the, uh, the program. Um, uh, the first thing we really want you to get out of this is all of your questions answered from this info session alone, but really what I'm hoping for is to actually spur a lot more questions. And when those come up, and they should, we have student services um, available to take care of your questions, um, however in depth or personal they may be. Um, you can phone 530-757-8777, Monday through Friday at eight to five, we have a phone bank, that or email them at cpe at ucdavis.edu. There, they'll respond to the questions, all the logistics, all of the basic questions. If there's something a little bit more in depth or more specific uh, that the program staff could handle, that is Julie Brinley. Uh, Julie Brinley is on this uh, webinar. Say hello, Julie. Hi, everyone. Julie's the one that sends out the packets for uh, those that are coming to residential program about rentals units and how to. Uh, navigate the UC Davis campus and more specific questions um, for logistics and the brewing. Uh, for the little bit more in-depth questions that come to Julie and through student services, we'll pass that on to Glenn Fox, who is the academic director. He's also the UC Davis Anheuser-Busch Endowed Professor of Malting and Brewing Science at UC Davis and runs the campus programs as well as our uh, continuing professional education. Um, I'd like Glenn to say a few words. Hi, Jim, and hi, everyone. Glad you could join us this afternoon. I hope everyone's staying healthy and well. Uh, the next person we've invited to, to join our webinar, um, because he's very informative, he's gone through the program, um, and he's, he knows more about what it would feel like to you, and he might be the best person to answer the question. It's Logan J uh, Jager, who is our um, Master Brewer Certificate Program graduate from the class of 2020. Uh, say hello, Logan. Hey everyone, really happy to be here. Thanks uh, to the UC Davis team for inviting me. Happy to give my perspective. And just for a little um, background, Logan's getting really close to closing on his new brewery. Um, so wish him luck and- uh, Don't jinx me, Jim. Yeah, buy a pint when it's open or, or two. Uh, this is your session. Uh, you will be, um, this is for you. We're, we're um, trying to answer all your questions. Uh, don't wait for the uh, final Q&A to uh, jot down your answers. Use the chat function to put in your questions and we'll scavenge those at the end and we'll, we'll address all of your concerns. This is about you. Uh, so feel free to ask questions and make it uh, personal for you. Uh, the general um, agenda is the welcome, which we've just completed. Um, we're going to talk about industry trends. We'll go over some of our brewery short courses, which are in person at UC Davis. We'll also talk about our online brewing courses and webinar series that have been really helpful for those that just can't uproot their life and come all the way to UC Davis. Then we'll go on to the Master Brewer Certificate Program, which is the flagship Master Brewers Program. We now have that has been in person, but now is online as well uh, for those that can or um, whatever suits their needs. Uh, we'll follow up with some financing your education, some questions about people, how, how do you finance these programs? And then we'll go jump to the Q&A. Um, so don't forget to put in your chat function questions as we go along. Um, you don't have an ability to just jump in and, and unmute yourself. So this is your chance to kind of get your questions into the queue for our panelists to answer. Um, we're gonna have a first poll. Uh, we're gonna ask you to use the polling function um, to tell us about how you heard about their, our professional brewing programs. Um, 
and the answers are starting to pour in. I, I, general web search is the one that's prevailing, but it's very interesting that we have a lot of others. Uh, so I'm kind of interested in how other people heard about this if it wasn't from a friend or colleague. Um, and there's some people that are already on the, the CPE mailing list to get to our programs, right? Uh, the general web search is just how most people find us. Um, so the next question, Uh, next slide is to give you a little bit of a background of where the, the current uh, industry is heading. Uh, we had a really major glitch because of COVID in 2020. Uh, craft sales were down for the first time. Um, import beer slowed down um, quite a bit. It's really expected to rebound very sharply. Um, there's over 8,000 craft brewers in the U.S. So there's a lot of competition, but there's still a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of demographic areas that have not been uh, served by a local brewery, uh, craft brewer. Um, we know it's still active because there's over a thousand uh, licenses still in the works, Logan's being one of them, um, that are based, um, that are currently active. Uh, we have a lot more breweries opening than closing. And it, even after and during this COVID era time, um, it's still going pretty um, solid. Um, the craft brewing industry has $22.2 uh, billion to the U.S. economy in 2020, even in this downturn. It is a robust industry that will still see um, advancements and, and um, an upturn coming up. Um, how you get your education and how you get noticed by some of the breweries is really critical for your uh, career development, whether it's working for another brewery or starting your own. So the second poll. I promise this is the last one. Um, I want to find out, tell us a lot about how you, uh, why you're um, exploring brewing. We have a really nice, even mix of responses to this. Um, we have about half being home brewers that want to do better. Um, and quite a few that are already in the brewing profession and would like to um, um, hone their craft. Okay. Yeah. So the next one is going to be a little video clip. This is, uh, we have two videos we're going to show you that um, highlight a little bit about what the programs are. Uh, they can explain it a lot better than I, so uh, take it away, Charlie. When I look at a glass of beer, I realize that it is a thing of artistic beauty. Equally, it is a triumph of science and technology. Hi, how are you doing? Charlie Bamford here, and I would like to talk about the continuing and professional education programs on beer and brewing at the University of California, Davis. More than half a century, UC Davis has been the leading provider of university level qualifications in brewing science and brewery engineering in the United States. We're based in California, but our reach is global. As one of the world's most respected providers of brewing education, UC Davis continuing and professional education offers a number of educational options, for current and aspiring professional brewers. Our students gain unparalleled expertise in brewing science, technology, and engineering, and they go on to become leaders in the brewing industry. Our offerings range from short courses to a multi-week certificate program, and there are classroom, laboratory, and online offerings. Whether you are with or aspire to be with a very large brewing company or a much smaller brewery, you will find what you need at UC Davis. The Master Brewer Certificate Program is a unique 15-week program that provides an in-depth understanding of brewing science and brewery engineering. Featuring UC quality and university level training, the program covers the fundamental skills and insight for a successful career in the industry and the potential to rise to the highest levels of leadership within it. 
We offer a range of short courses. They are comprehensive and address the needs of both novice and experienced brewers. Offerings include one day to two day introductory courses and week long intensive courses. Courses feature topics such as brewing chemistry, microbiology, brewing calculations, and sensory and consumer science. We also have online courses addressing all the key aspects of beer quality and how to brew winning beer every time. You can take these courses at your own pace and fit them in around your daily work schedule, no matter where you are in the great big world of beer. Most other things, you can get all the key information on foam, flavor, color, clarity, and how to keep beer fresh. Every year, the number of people who successfully complete one or more of the UC Davis brewing programs can be counted in the hundreds. They come from around the world, representing both large-scale brewing companies and craft breweries, but also those not yet in the industry, but whose desire is to do so. We are here to help. Even if you don't intend to join the industry as a professional, there is still a wealth of great information to be had from enrolling in a UC Davis class. And I can assure you, it will be fun too. So stay tuned to find out how you too can get to become a part of the worldwide family of men and women who can say they learn from the best at UC Davis. Uh, that was Charlie Banforth, our own uh, retired uh, Pope of Foam, who is still teaching in our uh, continuing professional education courses, um, the predecessor uh, to Glenn Fox. Um, first off, we'll jump into some of the short courses we, we offer. Um, these have been going along since the early 90s. Um, they require no prerequisites. Um, we do uh, encourage... Uh, previous home brewing exper uh, experience, our most uh, basic course is um, Brewing Basics Beyond the Kit. And it's amazing how many people have never even used one of the store-bought kits to make beer before trying to uh, attend this course. Uh, so having a little bit of a, um, a uh, stovetop attempt gives you a long way to, to getting more enjoyment out of these courses. Um, they range in durations from one day to one week. They are in person. Tuitions range from $299 to $1,400. Classes are held in Davis, uh, both at our classroom next adjacent to the Sudwork Brewery and also on the campus, which is a state-of-the-art um, experimental brewery, uh, research brewery. Um, some of the brewing short courses are Introduction to Practical Brewing. There's a very in-depth one-week course where you have lectures and lab both uh, bundled together. Uh, like I said before, Brewing Basics, it's a two-day course that goes over the raw materials and processes. Um, we have people come from around the world for a simple uh, Brewing Basics course. Uh, we have a Brewing Microbiology Workshop, three days, so that you get um, hands-on with microscopes, looking at the organisms, streaking out uh, plates, and trying to figure out the yeast and the bacteria that are involved in making beer. We have some uh, other courses, Marketing of Craft Beer, a two-day um, course. We have Introduction to Craft Beer Law. Uh, that's a three, um, we have a, a two-hour sessions. Uh, we have a webinar series um, that we have adding all these rotating um, topics. We had uh, social media marketing of your uh, craft brewery. Uh, we have beer recipe development and, and scaling. Um, we have one on budget and quality control coming up. So look for the rotating um, cadre of courses we do on our webinar series. Uh, we have a new one coming up, uh, Introduction to Malting, that's in under development. And uh, maybe Glenn can speak to that um, when we get to the open end of the questions. Uh, the next video we're gonna show you is just a montage, a, ma a mix up, a mashup of all the courses we do.
it's kind of interesting seeing myself in the backdrop of one of that microscope shots with no beard on. So it was a little while ago. Um, next, after the, uh, the in-person courses, uh, I'm going to talk about the online brewing short courses. This is a series uh, taught by Charlie Banforth. Um, they are um, on foam, freshness, flavor, and color and clarity, and quality systems. Uh, tuition is $299 per class, 12 weeks. It's very self-paced, so you join and end. Uh, they're offered quarterly. Um, mostly they're offered twice a year each topic. Um, they're intended for anyone who's passionate about producing excellent beer. This is a in-depth into the, those things that the consumer actually perceives about your product. So it's a very, um, it's a different scope than what most brewers think of when you, okay, this is the raw materials, this is how you go through. It's turning it around and looking at backwards. What is a quality product? How do you maintain it? It's a very well-received um, short course series. Uh, we are talking about expanding this to having an internal lab uh, uh, boot camp on campus that'll tie that together to certify and give you a, uh, a badge on uh, your uh, expertise in, in these topic areas. Um, you can go onto the website and get a, um, a, a, um, a, a sample lesson where you join and you can actually see what it looks like for Charlie Banforth to present the material for one of the small topics. Um, and it's a good way to figure out if that's gonna be right for you to get started with. Um, this is also on the Canvas site, which is how we do our online education. And it's a good way to look at how we um, communicate both on forums and through uh, messaging to the uh, instructor and students. Um, from those um, online courses, we have our Master Brewer Certificate Program. This is our, um, our um, flagship program. It started in 1993 and has been evolving since. Um, and it has been historically a 15-week in-person um, program. Uh, we're now producing the same material, same topics, same instructors on an 18-month online, more spread out format for those that um, want to seat that way. Tuition $16,000. Um, like I said, we have in-person and online options. Um, it is application-based, unlike our other programs. Um, and there are prerequisites. You must have some college level background before you take this course, or you will flounder and fail. And we really do not want people to um, invest their time and effort and money um, into a program that they're not prepared for. Um, the prerequisites, which are our biggest question in general, is that math is an absolute requirement. You need to be able to do pre-calculus level of, of algebra equation solving. Um, there's additional requirements. There are four major areas that we, that we um, think are important prerequisites. We allow you to be deficient in two of them. If you're deficient in more, you will struggle and not succeed. It is really um, helpful if you can have more background. Um, we need you to have a biology course. Specifically, we'd prefer something in microbiology, cell biology, or biochemistry. Um, a biology course in biodiversity doesn't generally help uh, with the, the fundamentals you need. So really a, a good, strong biology cl class is, is critical. You need chemistry, second semester of general chemistry or beyond. Um, we do a lot of equations with chemistry and reactions within the yeast and in the barley and in the beer and in the um, packaging. Uh, there's physics, heat and uh, mechanics. Um, we do a lot with uh, design on the brewery, um, how things work, but also in designing a, a brewery, engineering is a really important uh, uh, area of, of expertise with heat transfer, fluid dynamics, and thermodynamics. So you need two of those four. Um, and I would prefer, um, I would suggest you find the cheapest way of getting those if you don't currently have them. Junior colleges are great. There are some online programs, but as long as you um, join the course that has a certain level of expertise curriculum and you get a passing grade in it, um, that'll be acceptable. Um, if you have more questions on that, Christy is very well versed in pre-screening the um, course prerequisites for you. 
So if you are in doubt, you can actually talk to Christy and figure out if these are um, available, if these are uh, meeting this, the needs of the um, prerequisites. So a little bit deeper in what the in-depth um, in-person UC Davis uh, course is. Um, it's based in Davis, like I said. The next one starts on March 7th and goes to June 17th. This is a full resident 15 week program. It's full time, Monday through Friday, nine to four. And that's generally the core um, curriculum delivery time. We have guest speakers, we have a wide range of stuff. You will be studying beyond those hours to um, effectively pass the course. Uh, we have 13 weeks of lecture followed by two weeks of practical brewing and lab ex experiences on campus. So you go on campus and you uh, use the pilot brewery to put all that uh, lecture material into practice. Like I said before, it's about $16,000. All the course materials are included. That does not include room and board. Um, we have a, um, a robust uh, list of uh, rental ability um, availabilities and we actually join cohort um, uh, students together to see if they want to uh, be roommates in the program to um, help that. You must submit an online application. And like I said before, the prerequisites are mandatory. Um, we do, we've in production of an online version of this. When we've shifted to remote instruction on COVID, um, the hesitancy to doing it uh, remotely has been lifted. And a lot of, um, of our students really wanted to see an online version. It gave them more time to sit with the material and synthesize the material. Some are some of our students are really interested in the in-depth UC Davis experience, and some are want to have a little bit lighter load because of their work and home life. Um, this one is asynchronous, instructor-led, which means you have instructor office hours. The same lectures that are in the uh, in-person course are our online instructors. This one launches in January of 2022. You can take 18 months to two years to complete. Uh, there are seven classes uh, classes with the uh, optional in Davis boot camp if you'd like to um, avail yourself of that. The first course is work production and raw materials. Second course is beer production and brewery microbiology. Third is cellular and uh, cellular and lab operations. Uh, the fourth one is brewery engineering. Uh, those four have to be taken in order to progress. The final three, which is beer packaging, beer sensory, uh, brewery safety, sustainability, and beer quality can be taken all at once or in any order that you feel like you'd like to take those courses to finish the program. Uh, like I said, it's self-paced. You have a firm start and end date. You have an end project, but you can uh, study ahead or procrastinate to the end. I would suggest you stay on target. Uh, you have a full range of cohort students on line with you that you can ask questions of if you get stuck. The instructors will be there to answer your questions during the quarter as well. Um, like I said before, the courses one through four must be taken in order. Tuition is still to be de determined. Some of the courses will cost um, 1800 um, and some will cost a little less um, depending on the scope of the program. Uh, they do not include um, your books. For the online portion, you will order your books through Amazon or whatever, uh, or the BA, Brewers Association, whatever you want to find your books and get them de mailed uh, directly to you. Uh, like I said, we have a week-long boot camp at the end of the program, but additional fees do apply for that. Uh, you must, just like the in-person program, submit an online application um, and have your prerequisites um, adjudicated to make sure that they're good. Um, this is a brief uh, list of topic outlines, uh, grain handling, malting, malt analysis, brew house, uh, my favorite, which is yeast fermentation process and their effect on beer quality, uh, finishing of beer, sterilization, packaging. We have some engineering, fluid um, flow through pipes, through pumps, heat transfer and um, insulation um, and fouling of efficiency. Uh, we have uh, carbonation, mixed gases, we also have uh, theory and practice of refrigeration in a brewery. Uh, we have sustainability. We have um, sensory, how to set up a sensory uh, program. 
there's just a long list of different topics. And like I really want to enforce is the topics that are covered in person are also covered online. Um, it is not a shortened abbreviated course. It is just as um, rigorous. So how to apply, you go to the UC Davis site, uh, you complete the online ap application, you have to upload your transcripts showing you have the prerequisites that are uh, required. Uh, you upload your standard work resume, and then you have to pay the $45 application fee um, to be able to, to get into the queue, um, to be able to uh, join the program. Uh, we do have ways of helping you find employment after this program. Uh, for those that are in the in-person program that are really tight cohort, we have a resume booklet uh, that we put together for all of the, the people going through the program. Uh, we have a job posting newsletter. So industries, um, craft brewers will send in their um, advertisement for a, a brewer or recommendations. Uh, we send that out to all of our graduates um, to be able to um, connect our graduates with the, um, um, with the people that are hiring uh, skilled brewers. We have on-site interviews for those that are in person. We have uh, some of the large breweries come and uh, organize in-person interviews um, with, um, to arrange um, internships or uh, entry-level jobs when they're done with the program. Uh, professional brewing um, resume booklets were, was put out once a year and started to be and were mailed to all of our industry partners. Um, we're tending to we're going to be shutting down the resume mail to booklet because it expense and, and getting it out, but we're still going to have an electronic version of that. Uh, people still go back to look at graduates from five years ago that have had industry experience since then. Uh, but we are here to help. Um, Christy Craig, I, um, I want I can't even remember if I said to say hi to Christy, but you can say hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I did post at the very beginning there a link to my Calendly. If you do have any questions from along the way or if you want to direct email or call me, feel free. I'm happy to have happy to help with any questions in the program or along the way. Yeah. That Calendly um, is a really nice way of you setting up an appointment and telling her when you want to meet with her, um, the available slots, but still phone call, email, she's always there. She has been helping our students for quite a long time. So she has a lot of the answers, um, even more of them than I do. Um, we do have financing for the, uh, the program and she is the person that can really help you with that as well. Uh, we have private student loans. Uh, there are Workforce and Investment Act funds. Um, and veteran education benefits. And these are generally applied to our longer uh, pr uh, master brewers uh, certificate program. Uh, but contact student services to get more information about that. Um, and so that is the uh, canned um, part of the program. And now we're gonna open it up to students' uh, questions, uh, app, uh, attendee um, questions, and, um, and we'll hope to get our panel to um, add some, but while I'm going through that, if um, Glenn or Logan want to join in and uh, and give a little brief synopsis of what we've covered so far. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I, I might start off if that's okay, Logan. I think I'm still relatively new to the program as well, and you can probably tell from my accent I'm not a local lad. Um, but I've been here a couple of years, and I came to the to this position knowing the reputation of the program anyway. And I think that speaks volumes to the previous instructors or the current instructors who provide excellent instruction with years and years of industry knowledge. And I think the benefit of the Master Brewers Program, and we, I had a, a, the head brewer from Sierra Nevada here today talking about a few things, and they still talk about how important this program is to their business. And most craft brewers we talk to it doesn't matter where they are in the US and even overseas, they say people coming from the Master Brewers program, they're usually a very good fit and very quickly within their brewery. As Jim said, there's plenty of opportunity and we do get a lot of people emailing us to say, do we have people available? So you don't see a lot of jobs in breweries advertised. It's very much a word of mouth 
and we're sort of the conduit between our previous students and the current needs in the industry. The industry sees our program as a, as a true pipeline. Not all students want to go into working in a brewery and we do have a, a small group of students like Logan that are so keen to actually continue and master their skills. They want to actually open their own brewery and I think the, the value of this course is the diversity of, of the instruction and we have people talking about that sort of opportunity. Um, the legislation required, all the laws around those sorts of um, applications and the pitfalls that might go with that. So we cover all of that and then diversity is a big part of it. And we get guest speakers coming in to, to talk about how they've set up diversity programs um, in those sorts of areas as well. So there's probably not a single topic that we don't cover in this, even though the, the, the main curriculum itself is covering some of the hardcore science. We don't limit it to the hardcore science. There's so much more to this industry uh, than just the science. And being a business person or um, understanding um, how to, to sort of put together a, a distribution chain, um, buying raw materials, uh, it, it's so complicated. Uh, but fortunately, our program will cover just about everything you need to do, I think. Logan, your turn. And Logan has a couple of questions already teed up for him too, so <laughs> no mind. Yeah, well, um, you know, I would love to just kind of uh, riff off of what Glenn was saying about um, how the program just gives you this, this foundation of knowledge that is invaluable. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of information out there in, in the world if you have a specific question about this or that. But what I, what I come across in, in my efforts as I'm launching my brewery is that if you don't have a basis of knowledge uh, by which to judge people's advice or when you're talking to a supplier or something like that, you're kind of lost. And so, you know, when I, when I went looking for a program I wanted to go to Davis because it's the world's best professional brewing program, like full stop. And, and I wanted to learn everything because I knew I wanted to start a brewery and I wanted that diversity all the way from craft beer law, all the way into running a, a, a quality assurance program in the brewery. So, um, yeah, you know, for me, it was, I was the class of 2020, uh, which, um, had, uh, the challenge of pivoting to online when, when COVID hit. And, uh, and I say it's a challenge. It actually turned out to be a great silver lining because uh, there were a lot of benefits to, to moving online. And I think a lot of that went into the development of the syllabus for the online portion. And I think the program's better off for it. Um, and so, yeah, I had, a, I had a fantastic experience. Um, you know, there were a couple of questions that were directed at, at me. So, Jim, if it's okay, I could address those now. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, uh, Omar asked um, right away about my knowledge of beer, making beer going into the program, and then um, how the certificate helped me um, make my brewery happen. So the short answer is I was a home brewer, but very a very casual home brewer. Um, I, I went into the program, uh, really wanted to create a brewery. That was kind of my thing. I wanted to give back to my community. And so I, I love brewing beer, but uh, for me, in my specific case, um, the advice that I got was, hey, if you really want to make beer, don't open a brewery because there's so many other things that you have to do uh, when, you're, when you're running a brewery that you don't get to spend as much time as you want on the brew deck. Um, and the, so the Davis program for me was really about getting to know all of those other different things. But uh, from, my, from my pure brewing ac acumen, if I only wanted to be a home brewer after the program, there were a lot of people in our cohort that were like that. There were retirees that had been home brewing for 30 years and wanted to kind of like demystify the background for it. And they're making better homebrew now. And they, you know, they had an awesome experience going through the program. So from, from a uh, quality of the, of, the, of the product that you create, absolutely, it's, a, it's night and day from, um, you know, from what you learn in that program. Even at the homebrew uh, scale, you can, um, you can really elevate your craft. And then um, 
Dan, Dan asked about um, the opportunity to network and, and asked about, uh, you know, people pivoting into the industry and then also for people that started in the industry and then, uh, and then moved on uh, within the industry. And yeah, I mean, the, the, the network is one of the most valuable um, aspects and, uh, you know, Dr. Brown and, and, and Glenn have uh, served as, you know, informal advisors for me since I left the program and, and, and I keep them informed as I'm, uh, you know, going through my uh, process for starting the brewery. And I ping them all the time about, hey, you know, I got this question or I need this piece of advice or I, I want to talk to this person. And so being able to network with uh, your with the faculty that, that can serve as advisors to you is fantastic. And then within the cohort, it's it's huge. Our, our Slack channel from the from the certificate program is still up and running. And, you know, there's 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 chatter and conversation in there every day. We're all troubleshooting things that we see in the brewery. Um, it's a safe space for all of us to kind of like say, oh gosh, I did this total boneheaded thing in the brewery today and I got to figure out how to, you know, fix it. And, you know, you get 10 different ideas from friends about, um, you know, about the challenges that you see in the, in, uh, in, at the job. And um, so, yeah, for people that are looking to break into the industry, it's certainly very, very helpful. Um, there's people that had no industry experience that have uh, you know, big jobs at, at great breweries coming out of the program. Um, so it's successful for that. And then within the, if you came from the industry, uh, there's a couple of people that were assistant brewers that left the program and, and um, became head brewers. Or uh, there's one that I can think of that, that purchased a brewery up in Washington. And now he's, now he's running the place. And, um, you know, it, so it, it's a great way of, uh, networking into other opportunities. Um, you know, someone from our class got a, a brewer job at El Segundo Brewing, which is like, if you're from LA, is they make fantastic beer and uh, amazing leadership team. And it's probably one of the, the coolest seats that you could get in the industry. We have people that went to uh, Deschutes and Lagunitas, um, Trumer, all over the place. So yeah, if you're, if you want to uh, go find a, uh, a really cool position in the industry. It's, it's a total, totally awesome way of, of doing that. So I'll, so I'll pause there, uh, Jim. Is that, is that, uh, yep, that that's great. yeah, then that may even stir, spur on a couple more questions, but I'm going to jump in and answer a couple of other ones. Um, do brewing, uh, prior, um, prior brewing classes count as prerequisites? You can send them in, but I would suggest that they do not. Uh, we want you to have the core science to be able to understand how we're presenting the new uh, brewing material in our way, rather than having it in um, common English, um, you know, a, a, you know, dummy down um, to get the point across. We want you to have the fundamental science skills to troubleshoot it yourselves, rather than be more formalistic. And some of these courses are teaching you the formula. We want you to understand the, the, you know, just the the recipe, we wanted you to understand how to design the recipe and how to troubleshoot the recipe by the science. So the math, the microbiology, the biology, the engineering, those are really fundamental skills you're gonna need um, no matter what some of the other courses. Um, if you, if the other courses uh, like at USD or at um, um, Oregon State, um, ha if they were had prerequisites, we would accept those same prerequisites but I would suggest that um, we'll take a look at the, the core courses you've had. Uh, one of the big questions that's come up is, uh, what about the wait line? Um, this week, at one point, we had a three-year wait list from time people signed up to the course to get in. Um, it was that backlogged. We did some fundamental changes. That was a small little room upstairs that was not ADA compliant for decades. Um, and we've now moved to an, a fully, um, modern classroom space, ADA compliant, uh, that can serve up to 45 students in the in-person course. That said, we still had some, um, you know, a, a little bit of a, um, a, a backlog, uh, but very small. Uh, with COVID and the shift to the online, we are fully expecting to have uh, available slots uh, for most uh, of the programs going forward uh, but we 
we anticipate filling them up to about 40 to 45 students in each one. Uh, so our backlog is a little bit more um, relaxed. Uh, so that should be less of a um, less of an impediment. Um, another question that came up was, do you have a list of the textbooks you use for the programs? Um, the number, the easiest one to answer is the online quality control from Charlie Banforth. Each one of those topics has a text that goes with it. The online, uh, in, the recorded lectures uh, expand on the information that's in there and test you on the material as you go through for your understanding. So those texts are associated with each course. Um, our Master Brewers program has a long list um, of multiple books. And we set that, we, um, we review that every single year for updates. Um, if you really were interested, you can uh, pass the question on to student services um, and that'll probably go to Julie and we'll get a list of what was last year's list. Um, I would not suggest you go out and purchase any of those and um, I, because we may shift to the new uh, editions or a different uh, book uh, for more uh, more current information. Um, let's go through. Um, yeah, the craft beer law uh, law programs. He's very interesting. We we um, the law uh, has been a um, one of the stumbling blocks for the home brewers to get around. Uh, what is the requirements? How to understand that? Um, the TTB used to put on courses where they would do the in, information for free. Um, at the last craft brewers conference, I talked to the TTB about when they were going to start putting the um, the cheat sheet back together and start mailing it out available to people how to find the information quickly. And they're trying to do a better job at that. And they're gonna be partnering with us as well on trying to improve the craft beer law and business side courses that we do uh, for the webinars. Um, what's the salary in the industry that runs the gamut? Um, you can be a poor owner or a, a rich assistant brewer. Um, it really is, the gamut to different parts. Um, if you're trying to get in with uh, the sour beer uh, at Russian River, you may be working a, a seller job for a while, but it'll give you invaluable updates. Um, Glenn, you have any more on anything on the salaries that brewers usually get um, coming through the program? Uh, I think it's it varies considerably with the level of uh, brewery you, you're moving to. Um, so a lot of the, the early startups and then those that have been going a couple of years probably aren't as well funded to support big salaries, but you go to some of the larger breweries and they're well equipped to support, you know, well-funded positions. So uh, as Jim said, the, the range is considerable. We, we could never put a, a single number against any of that. It's just so unpredictable. Um, another question came up, uh, how long, once you um, have an approved application, do you have to, um, I assume by schedule, meaning to uh, reserve your seat and pay your deposit? Um, we're not gonna, once you're approved, you don't have to pull the trigger. You stay, you've paid your $45 application fee and when it's available for your life, um, that's when you, you pull the trigger. Um, you can also, um, a lot of people have their applicants applications in, but they don't qualify, so they're going to have to delay while they take an online or a junior college course to get up to the prerequisites. We keep you engaged with that. You're still in the queue. Um, hopefully, you do not have a issue where you're ready to go and we have no spots for you. Um, but like the, um, I hope that answered that question. Um, are all these online short courses in the MBCP? And that's, no, they, uh, we have our own courses. We have our own academic rigor. Uh, they're a professional organization and we are an academic organization. Uh, we are, um, our curriculum is scrutinized for rigor and quality. Um, we cannot have our certificate programs uh, be called certificate programs where other industry um, agencies can start up brewing education programs without any kind of oversight. Um, uh, question over the prerequisites again for the master brewers. Um, you need, everybody needs to have a uh, basic pre-calculus algebra ability. We use that in everything. 
um, in all aspects of brewing uh, science. Um, then we have four other groups that you want to look at. One is a biology. That is usually we want cell biology. Um, uh, nursing microbiology is almost ideal for the program. Uh, any of those uh, molecular and cellular biology courses that you see, they don't have to be high, high uh, uh, level of course, but they need to be um, college level entry in that area. Um, we have um, chemistry. You need to have an ability to do some simple chemical equations um, that we really want you to go up to organic chemistry. Um, so uh, a year of general chemistry would be really, in, uh, really effective. We have um, physics, which is heat and thermodynamics. Um, we have another area, which is uh, engineering. So you're allowed to have a deficiency in two of those four, but you're gonna have to pick up those um, other uh, basic prerequisites as you go along the program. Some people find that extremely difficult and the in-person cohorts usually grab um, engineering nerds to give them um, you know, weekend tutorials and then the biology nerds help the engineers understand the different parts of it to get you through. You, with the online, you have a more in, um, expanded time to um, pick up your deficiencies. But if you're deficient in all four, you're really gonna be on the back marker and you really have to have at least two of those four. I hope that answers, answers that. Um, this, um, Jim, there was okay. one on the, a cap on students for the online courses. Um, the cap hasn't been set yet, depending on how we do it. It's a self-paced, but having um, we, we're not going to have a 600 person go through the program. We want to have it so that the instructor can um, interface with all of them on a regular basis. Um, so we, um, we haven't set the cap, but we generally uh, like to keep them about 50 to 60 online for those longer stretched out programs where the instructor can reach the students. Um, so we don't have that much. Um, Logan, you want to know how much that machine costs behind you? Um, yeah, you stole it. You're going to have to ask Doug Malman. This is the, yeah. this is the beautiful, uh, Anheuser-Busch donated, um, uh, pilot research brewery that, uh, that, that's Glenn's baby now. Um, so uh, I, I guess the, the cheeky answer would be it's priceless. It's yeah, a fun, four. fun piece of kit to, uh, to, to practice on. Yeah, the first piece of brewing kit was donated in 1958. And when I took the brewing courses in 1990, I learned on a 1958 horrible piece of machinery that is now in the Smithsonian. Well, it's, it's here in Nevada, uh, but the um, Smithsonian has a dib on doing rotating uh, display of it. Uh, that one came in um, and replaced that monstrosity. And now Glenn, if you look behind that, you, if you could see behind that, you'd see all of Glenn's new kit that is really just expanded the research capability of the brewery um, on campus. And most of that was donated. So it was priceless or free, uh, depending on uh, how you want to do the accounting. And, the, and I would say that also the industry is... Um really uh they, they love donating stuff to the university that's that's my casual observation uh as a student so there's all kinds of really fun super expensive toys to play with that uh that we won't be able to buy at our brewery for for a while <laughs> and i think that's one of the things with certainly the master brewers but some of the other courses that include some uh, in-person content in the brewery you can learn so much in a book but when you can actually get in there and, and a lot of people, they need to be visualizing things by doing it themselves. So once they got into the brewery and, and Logan was there about four weeks ago um, with some of his cohort from 2020 and things just for some people come together once they're actually physically doing something. Uh, you can read the theory and you can sort of picture it in your mind. But when you do the in-person component of the master brewers, suddenly 
the sights, the sounds, the smells um, all come together and it sort of starts to really gel uh, on, on the process we're doing. So we certainly support everyone coming to the in-person because um, you get that experience. But even with the online program, there's that option to do the in-person after you've finished. And, and Logan sort of, I think, can say he had quite a, quite a fun week uh, when he came and, and did the in-person and didn't expect as much fun as he had. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, if, uh, uh, Jim or Glenn, if you saw Caitlin's question about that. That, was, yeah, that one's going to come up. So go ahead. If you want to ask uh, answer that from a student's point of view of how much we go into that, please feel free. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's, uh, well, an interesting thing is that the industry is moving more uh, and more. Hey, Logan, could you ask, tell her what Caitlin's talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. About. Yes. Uh, so the, the question is, um, are you able to use principles learned in the MBCP to create beer or ciders from commercially derived fruit, uh, veggie pulp from uh, our juice bar? Our goal is to utilize our waste in better, more profitable ways, reach a closed loop system. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes. Um, you know, uh, you, you, you learn basic principles. There's certain sugars that are fermentable and there's certain that aren't. And there's a certain ways that uh, yeast and bacteria process um, sugars into to alcohol or other uh, products. Um, so in the industry is moving that way as well. Um, uh, you know, the uh, fruit, uh, fruited beers is a much larger percentage of the industry. So there's a lot of people that are looking at, um, you know, best practices around fruited beers when, when fruit goes into the process, uh, what are the challenges that are associated with that? Um, in terms of what you're talking about, uh, if there may be some uh, side streaming or waste streaming stuff, I don't know that that's directly applicable. Like you could take uh, left you know, leftover stuff and then uh, produce a beer from it or something like that. But um, the, you know, something that's interesting within the industry is there's a big push towards sustainability. And there's a lot of people that are looking at uh, repurposing raw ingredients, um, uh, you know, after we're done with them to figure out how do you close, close the loop. Um, you know, An Andy Hooper from Seismic Brewing is a, is a, um, a lectures in the program a lot as a guest lecturer. They just did a, a local uh, brew where their whole goal was to take all the ingredients from raw material to finished product all within 12 miles of their brewery in Santa Rosa. And it was a really interesting deal. And they talk a lot about, you know, the grain that goes back to feeding, um, you know, animals on the farm where the, where the barley was grown. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a direct answer to your question, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people that are thinking about, Hey, how do we create a more sustainable product? Yeah. And I might jump in too there. Uh, the industry is very conscious of their whole footprint. Um, even, you know, while we think locally, the industry is having a footprint on the whole planet. And a lot of even small craft brewers, they're very conscious of their contribution and how they're managing their waste streams. Uh, so there's quite a lot of innovation going on, particularly the solid waste streams. And instead of just being going out to feed livestock, uh, how can be, can, be, can it be composted and turned into some sort of energy source or upcycled into some sort of product? So uh, the industry is very aware of this. We don't include that conversation specifically about other things like fruit and pulp um, or veg veggie pulp. We're very much focused on grains and, and hop waste. Um, but it is a great question, Caitlin, and I'm happy if you want to email me and I might be able to put you in touch with some folks who are doing that more directly. I mean, uh, being able to manage your waste streams and monetize your waste streams has been something that's been going on for a long time. It's a, it's a staple of the brewing industry, especially in Europe, to uh, take your yeast, uh, spent yeast, and sell it to a distillery or to organic food. Uh, with a Food Safety Modernization Act that's come into place, um, highlighting how uh, your grains, spent grains, go into the human food system is under more scrutiny. So that's why it's making a lot more um, uh, creative to try and get it into a, 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 the composting and other side streams rather than going to any kind of uh, landfill or into the um, COD, BOD of your uh, water um, systems. Um, 
in, um, I could also add, I, one of my good friends has a cidery in, um, in Wisconsin and they focus on cider. They don't focus on beer and they sent one of their brewers, uh, to, to really just get the master brewers perspective to bring back to the cidery. And, um, the feedback was that they found it really helpful as well. Uh, there is a question about cost to the program and deferred payments. Um, I would uh, suggest you uh, contact uh, Christy and follow through with uh, exploring those, but the 15 week, did you wanna answer that one, Christy? Yeah, I can jump in on that one. So you have two different options with it. The in-person is going to be all up front prior to the program beginning, where the online is actually going to give you the opportunity to pay part of the tuition per course. And I believe it was outlined that we're approximating about $1,800 per course for those seven courses. So if you'd like to send me an email or give me a call, I'm happy to go more into deal, detail with you. And then I'll also look into financing options for you. Okay. That's a direct question to you, Logan. What's the cidery? It's just like a brewery, but they make cider. <laughs> Oh, what is the cidery? It's a uh, <laughs> oh, which cidery? Yeah, yeah. It's sorry. It's called a sociable cider. Yeah. Right. Uh, is there any more questions that we haven't um, picked up that you wanted to answer? Go ahead and type it into the chat right now. Uh, we're starting to lose a lot of people with the uh, the summing up of all the questions. So, um, if there's no more questions jumping in, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time. Uh, to the panelists as well to uh, invest their time to help uh, explain some of the programs, but also to the attendees that um, are interested in the program. Please, this is not a, a high pressure sales uh, when you contact Christy. This is an answer. Uh, we already have your email, so there's no more. Uh, that's about as depth as we get, but she's very helpful, has really helped our uh, students for over a long period of time to get where they want to go. Um, and we want to get you into the right programs that suit your need. Um, if that's not, if that's it, uh, thank you all, um, Logan, Glenn, Christine, Julie, thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Thanks guys.